There has never been a better time to be a Sony fan. The Last of Us Part 2 was recently announced, God of War is making a Nordic return, Nathan Drake went out with a bang in Uncharted 4, soon to be followed up by a pretty large DLC campaign, The Last Guardian finally hit shelves after years of waiting, and Hideo Kojima is bringing his brand new game, Death Stranding, exclusively to the PS4. Wowzers. Perhaps most intriguingly though is that Crash Bandicoot is making a triumphant return to his glory days in the form of a complete remaster come remake of his first three games, the Insane Trilogy. And that's not the only PS1 game with an announced remaster either. With Wipeout, Parappa the Rapper and Final Fantasy VII all approaching, it appears that for better or worse, the remaster is stronger than ever, which begs the question, what ought to be next in line? So I'm Peter from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 PS1 classics that desperately need to be remastered. Side note here, this list works under the assumption that said remastery would be done well. Some remastered games are terrible desecrations or just entirely unnecessary, but let's all just suspend disbelief for a few minutes and imagine a future where all remasters are made with all due care. Okay? Okay. Number 10, Crash Team Racing. As absolutely amazing as the Insane Trilogy might turn out to be, there's only one very obvious omission from the collection, Crash Team Racing. CTR was Sony's answer to Mario Kart, and it worked. The game was loved by critics and players alike at the time of release, and is still loved by many fans to this day, with some saying it's their favorite game in the entire franchise, or even their favorite kart racer of all time. Just like any PlayStation game from the late 90s, the graphics today do look like someone has dropped a comic book into a pond and all the colours have run, but the fun is certainly still there. To have this game graphically remastered but with the original slick feel retained would be a tremendous treat for fans, and hey, you never know, if the Insane Trilogy does better than expected, we could be seeing a CTR remake coming our way in the future. Fingers crossed. Number 9, LSD Dream Emulator. Classic is a subjective label for LSD Dream Emulator. Back in the day, for most players outside of Japan, it passed by pretty much unnoticed, but that's not stopped it gaining a massive online cult following today, and why not? LSD is, if nothing else, genuinely one of the strangest and most unique console games of all time no disputes. Played from a first-person perspective, the game allows you to walk around and explore trippy fantasy worlds that are unpredictable, colourful, and a little bit eerie. I mean, it's literally a dream emulator. The only difference between this footage and my actual dreams is there's no muscly version of Ben Potter here. Shame. What? Now what's key to this as an entry for this list is there's no combat or storyline in the game, meaning it's simply about visual exploration. And that is exactly what makes LSD Dream Emulator such a great option for a remaster. There's no denying this game looks very dated, but imagine exploring this sort of surrealism in current gen graphics, in VR even. You might need a sick bag handy, but it would still be an unmatched experience, no question. Number 8, Metal Gear Solid. Okay, cards on the table. I really liked Metal Gear Solid 1, but I don't have any strong opinions on the subsequent games beyond that. But for some of the guys here at What Culture, naming no names, Scott Tailford, MGS is an institution and one of the most important franchises in gaming history. Now, the way I see it, when you consider the fact that it came out in September 1998, i.e., after the first two Resident Evil and Tomb Raider games, I don't think it actually broke that much ground in terms of cinematic gameplay. But that said, Psycho Mantis was a a wonderful boss battle, the soundtrack was incredible, and groundbreaking or not, the gameplay was still irrefutably pulse-pounding. I might not have been a super fan of the franchise, but this game was still glorious, and considering the visuals have sadly not aged very well, we have to consider how thrilling it could be to see a remastered version in the Fox engine. It's food for thought, for sure, if nothing else. Number 7, Hogs of War. Something totally different now from Metal Gear Solid, I've already waxed lyrical in the past about how much I loved this game, and it's almost entirely down to the late Rick Mayall's side-splitting performance as over 50% of the characters Your war is snapping over. Alongside Mark Silk. Oh, I bleed! <laughs> And that's exactly the point here. Because of the incredible cast and script, this game is great in spite of some pretty damn fugly models and textures, and that is exactly what a good remaster should be all about. There would be no need to reinvent this game at all. All it would take for the current license holder to create a masterpiece would be to reuse the old voice work with the blessing of Mayall's estate, bodies and blood and things blowing up, it's not a mini piece and bring these visuals up to date. That's it. Throw in the online multiplayer, maybe, that was only available on the PC version back in the day, and you'd have an instant hit on your hands, perfect for casual comedic gaming and a pleasant trip down memory lane. Pig with big grin have enormous weapon. Please, can we have this? Please, please, can we have this? Can we have this? I want this. 
Number 6, Dino Crisis. While Capcom's Dino Crisis is often simply described almost dismissively as Resident Evil with dinosaurs, it has still managed to hold its own as one of the mainstays of the PS1 era. It was able to stand out by being more of a panic horror game as opposed to survival horror thanks to the dinosaurs being faster and smarter than zombies and also, you know, just being f***ing dinosaurs. We've already seen Capcom's ability to remaster games in that genre, so it's not too much of a pipe dream to think they could move on to the Dino Crisis series in good time. Number 5, Gex 2, Enter the Gecko. The late 90s and early noughties were jam-packed with so many memorable 3D platformers that it's both sad to see the format has practically wasted away and exciting to think the Ensane trilogy might be the genre revival we've long awaited. On that note, we were a little spoilt for choice when it came to adding brightly coloured 3D platformers to this list. Croc, Toy Story 2, 40 Winks, how do you separate out the best? Well, that's where Gex comes in. What made Gex 2 so great was the drastic difference between its levels and the wonderfully self-aware pop culture references throughout. So, Watson, this is where old Chili goes to die. Most PS1 platformers pride themselves on varied level themes, I mean, look at Crash Bandicoot itself, but here, there was everything from a Looney Tunes tile set to a Bruce Lee-inspired level. Just to add to that, there was a great wall climbing ability in the game that was actually coded reasonably well. The camera and controls handled changes in orientation remarkably smoothly, and so it made for an awesomely unique platformer that stood out from the rest. While there's no denying that many of the references in Gex 2 and its sequel would be tragically outdated today, Axe in the chest for Scatman Crothers, a remaster would still be a nice pleasant nostalgia trip, both in terms of revisiting the game itself, but also those 20-year-old 90s references as well. No, I said Lou Wow, not Lou Wow, baby. Number 4, Ape Escape. But whoa there, Nelly. While we're on the subject, I don't think Jules would let me live if I didn't also include Ape Escape in this list. Who would have ever thought running around catching monkeys in a net would be such an entertaining and important game for PlayStation? Not only would it become one of THE PS1 3D platformers, above and beyond the likes of Gex and just shy of the platform's true royalty, but it also was one of the first games to actively require the use of the DualShock controller. Ape Escape 2 was recently polished up and re-released for the PS4, and the original even saw a bit of a tidy up back in 2000 on 5 on PSP, but to mixed reviews, and that's not okay. Spike and the monkeys from Ape Escape are classic PS1 characters, and the game had revolutionary controls that took you through vibrant worlds and thoroughly entertaining challenges. A full remaster would certainly be welcomed by fans, and it would be a great way to introduce younger players to the great games they may have missed back in the day. Number 3, Tekken 3. Tekken 3 improved on its predecessors so much that it later became the fourth best-selling game on the PlayStation 1 of all time, shifting 8.5 million copies. Do you need to know any more? Okay then, everything about the core gameplay was tweaked to be faster, smoother and more varied than it was before, the graphical step up was incomparably impressive, over a dozen new fighters were added to the roster including Eddie, Brian, Horang, Gunjack, Dr. B, Ling Shayu, Jin and Ogre, it was the first time we were all able to play that extra beat em up mode Tekken Force, and don't get me f***ing started on volleyball. Jesus. To revisit this game with completely remastered graphics but the same old mechanics would be super appealing to me and many other fans, I'm sure. Tekken has since come on in leaps and bounds, and I respect anyone who's a dab hand in the latest installments, but what with interactive arenas and rage bars nowadays, I'd welcome the opportunity to get back to basics. Come on, Namco, give it to me. Number 2, Silent Hill. Good tidings of great joy, a Resident Evil 2 remaster is coming. Supposedly. Silent Hill, though, less movement there. But why? Silent Hill is one of the most influential horror games to come from the PS1, and set so many bars for the genre. The game bridged the gap between the common campy spook fests of the time to true psychological horror. It made you afraid of what was around you, but more afraid of what you didn't know was around you. This is thanks in part to Konami hiding the PS1's limitations with that highly atmospheric and iconic fog clever. Obviously, despite massive hardware improvements since then, the fog would absolutely have to stay in remaster, but a graphically revamped trip through that utterly gross and disgusting Silent Hill would take that original psychological fear and tip it overboard. It's something that fans would pay hand over fist for without doubt. And number one, Spyro the Dragon. When it comes to my favourite PS1 games of all time, the gap between the Crash and Spyro trilogies is so tiny, if it even exists at all. Just like our favourite Orange Bandicoot, our favourite Purple Dragon embodies everything it was to play PS1 back in the 90s and early noughties. It was a time when 3D platformers were reigning supreme, and whether or not he's your number one, Spyro was irrefutably somewhere on the winner's podium. With three main games, just like Crash, it would be beyond amazing to see a remastered collection hit the PS1 
PS4 store in the future. Anything to wash away the sour taste we were left with in his later years, and God, let's not even think about what he's up to right now. And that's our list, but I'm sure I've missed out some of your favourites, so let me know in the comments below what else you'd like to see remastered from the PS1. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and you can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Peter from whatculture.com, and I'll see you soon.